Spear is dex based, so you're not gonna benefit from the stats. No, no, it is. Look, it's strength. Yeah, Case but strength. it's oh. half of like strength and oh, fuller on dex. True. I no, I kind of like my uh, only one weapon because I can rush people with it now. But yeah, I think you're right. I mean, you're literally playing with half your moveset if you do that. I definitely think you need to be arranged, man, because people like run away and shit. You nah, I have a whole blast now, so <laughs> no one can run away from me. <laughs> Hello. Hmm. I wanna show you something, yeah, man. Right. Do you like the bang? No. <laughs> Look with that mask on my face, you see it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit, this armor, I love it. The forsaken. I'm looking for some weird flowers, you know, that's what I'm doing right now. Alright. Yeah, I'll be around. I'm gonna walk around, discover stuff in the map. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. I'm just going around, leveling up my bow and finding up the rare shit. I wanna go to the question marks around the map. So check what it is. <clears throat> go to the even... towns, like the upcoming towns, so you get a teleport up, just in case. Nah, so the bright that's what I did yesterday. The bright wood, I will leave it till we go together there. Like, I just went in town on this uh, cutlass key down here, right? So just I have, I have the teleport spot. Like if we go there and I'm not waking up yet tomorrow, like early, we can just teleport and catch up. True, true. Oh my god, encumbered? Really? Man, I've been playing this for almost 13 hours. So nice the game. I don't feel stressed when I play this game. Yeah. So chill. You feel stressed when you play games? Like you know, you feel your back hurts sometimes. You know that kind of feeling. I all the time, dude. I should be sleeping. Yeah. I blame you, sing. Huh? I, I saved your sleep schedule, man. Yeah, you're gonna wake up at 3 a.m. if I didn't stop you. Is it weird that Magomed is not playing this game? Played the beta, but feels like no it's idea. such a game for him. But he didn't play it though. Like he he played the beta. Did he? Yeah. He yeah, played yeah. It with uh, we downloaded it together and he played it a bit on. Okay. I think he'd like the PvP at least. I think he would rage too much if he played PvP with a lag and <laughs> shit. Uh, yeah, probably. <laughs> His name is Magimed, Super Blade. He's number 250p's dead. The market global or is it a separate market for each? I think it's global. I actually don't think it's global. It might be town based. Because there's a there's a trade tax. That's true. Yeah, it doesn't matter. It doesn't make sense if it's uh global. Because then you just go to the town with the cheapest tax. tax yeah. But instead you have to trade wherever you are. Thank you. I'm leaving my keyboard. I hope I don't come back and see myself dead after my toilet. <laughs> Just hide in a bush somewhere, prone. I got the quest that you had earlier, saying the squash one. Oh. Yeah. I'm catching it up. You should quest. <laughs>
sense. I want this queue to die down so I can relog and I can see my quest. <laughs> yeah, do you also have that abandoning event thingy? Stuck no, I just quest? like literally nothing on my right screen. Not even the quest. I guess it's a similar bug then. This place mobs are insane actually, the aggro range is crazy. I don't know how many squash I need. Is that 7 December? Isn't that wrong? Is it wrong? For dying light, it just, I just copy pasted what they gave me. But I think that that's wrong. I thought it was 10, but I don't know. Oh, they updated it. Oh. I'll update it too. Dun, 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 dun. I don't know if you can pin the recipes on the quest log so you know what to gather. I wonder if that's a thing. Just have good memory, dude. <laughs> I don't want to have a good memory. Yeah, fuck, man. I cannot brain damage this thing through and just like, you know? Yeah, same, dude. I have brain damage too. Born this way. Oh. It's bad, done. man. We're never chosen to the war. I'm not yeah, broken. man. You know, back in the in the ancient times, Middle Ages and everything, they even drafted the most worthless peasant into war. Just gave him a spear. We're not even drafted, man. We're not even peasants. Feels bad, man. Feels fucking bad, man. I don't know what to expect tomorrow, but we'll see, I guess. Okay, when we make our own town, we can go in our own war and draft ourselves in. Actually, with my new weapon, I'm destroying the corruption alone. What? Shit. Yeah, I'm encumbered. Oh, fuck. Where's the box? I also wish the menus remembered what you were doing, basically. Man, if SCA players were smart, wouldn't they just play on EU servers? So when it's evening for them, it's morning in EU. And then they always get in without a queue. Or the pink, it just kills them like the other plus. Wait, no, don't do that. You're gonna fuck up my queue. <laughs> I mean, now that we need a guild and you said that we're gonna add more people to the guild, you know? Might get a bit kind of crazy. And also the bow is offset to the right of it. I know! Right the fucking... The arrow goes a bit to the left when like you're not the, aiming. Like where it points, it's not where it goes. I know! It's fucking shit! It always goes a little bit left games? of it. That's more games because you shoot a bit from the right. Okay, the, okay, the deer oh, doesn't have a head oh, hitbox. What kind of bow do you have, Sing? A uh, rare or uncommon? A uh, rare. But my bow shit, okay. I think. I, I got a bow. Uh, 175 damage, 9 dexterity, 4 constitution, mortal energy when you kill something, gain 9 yeah, stamina. Tell me the gear level and the, the green stats. You mean uh, blue stats? Oh shit, wait, wait, wait. Or blue I'm stats, attacked. whatever is blow it. I'm getting attacked by Suka. Killing so many turkeys, bro. I need like high level mobs or like food things. What's 
my quest here again. Defeat the ancient guardian. Oh, what the hell? It's another another dungeon here. Starstone something. It's level 35. Yep. Oh, I found the next dungeon. You little fuck, you were... Oh yeah, that's a dungeon though. Huh? I think that dungeon completed later on. Like, uh, when you come with the quest. Don't know. Shard of Ancient Earth. What? <laughs> Idiot. Trying to attack me while AFK. Okay, the both stats, uh, level gear score 317. I don't want it. Uh, Alright. Oh, I need to know. I deleted. <laughs> Man, some level 19 attacking me. This guy just died to a mob. What? He just gave up instantly. Oh no. Nobody expects help in this world. It was Batman. Oh fuck, man! Picking up Barry. Oh fuck, dude. Level thirty-two, farming corruption. Corn, bro, stop stealing. <laughs> Meming about Korean streamer? He thinks it's a meme, dude. Barry, this place. I'm getting shit gear from corruption. Yeah, because you already hit your peak on the gear. Yeah. But shit is just bringing you close to what your level is, basically. I think. Me, 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 me. <laughs> Brothers claim the fort. They claim their own fort. I cannot have all the food buffs at once. No, that's sad. Or trap my harvest food buff, buff or mining buff. No, but apparently you can't, you can only have one. See the quest? What? Yeah, it's all bugged for every one of us. I think because we went through the corruption. Did none of you completed it? No, no I, I mean, just cannot see the quest. Yeah, I can't see quest log. It's all bugged. 
I just have to open the map and see what I'm <laughs> But the... Uh, I mean, some of you didn't complete the uh, dungeon quest. Yeah, I didn't. I finished it. I didn't pick up the thingy inside. I have to craft it instead. <laughs> like, you don't even technically need to beat the dungeon. You can just craft the thing and just continue the quest. I think it's most about the gear. Yeah, that, that's different, obviously. My locking is almost full of nice. Oh my god, look at the next to the right wood, to the right. At those corruptions, what? Yeah, no, right? It's insane. What the fuck? I wonder if they scale with the region level. Do you think they do? I think it's scaled with the uh, uh, war conflict that happens in the world. Alright, I'm logging out. Alright. What the fuck was. Serious. Uh, Pits51, thank you for the 32. A Squirrel for the 10. BFG Happy for the 5. Ario, thank you for the 5. Bloody Jeff, thank you for the 41. Let's see, man. Let's see. Uh... Is this the right one? Uh, that timer is wrong. No sound? Not sure if bugged or no sound. But it's in two minutes. Oh, <sighs> oh man, I'm so tired. Hope this is going to be good. <laughs> is FPS? It's, uh... It's a zombie game, but it's a weird one. Like uh, instead of just shooting shit, you dodge them and juke them with parkour. It's uh, quite a unique take on, on a zombie game. I finished the first game too. It was very nice. It's multiplayer, yeah. It's it's like four man co op, uh, multiplayer, survival, kind of crafting, parkour, zombie avoiding kind of game. It's not really comparable to Back for Blood. A, a different type of games, really. <clears throat> what do you do when you're sad? You don't want to be sad. Play video games until you're no longer sad. No other choice, man. Man, I'm so hungry too. Fuck. Ten seconds. Welcome to the... 
Wait, what episode number are we on again? The fourth? So let's count. We started with introducing Aiden Coldwell, the protagonist. That's true. And then we looked at some of the monsters we'll find in the city. Exactly. And then it was parkour and creative combat. Wow. All right. Well, four episodes already. Thank you so much for joining us on this journey. And if you missed any episodes so far, they're all on our YouTube channel for you to catch up. And we have already shown you so much, it might seem you know everything about the game. But... <laughs> but it's just the tip of the iceberg, so let's dive a bit deeper. Today we're going to show you the vast open world of Dying Light 2. Even though it's violent, brutal and full of death, you'll find there's a surprising amount of beauty and vibrancy in the city. And you will hear a lot about exploration, freedom, interaction and some secrets you may find in the city. And at the end of this episode, there's going to be one secret less because we're going to be doing a big old Hollywood name drop and showing you a new big name in the world of Dying Light 2, Stay Human. Who is it? You have to wait till the end to find out. There are many elements that create the open world of Dying Light to Stay Human. The city has a diverse architecture with historic churches, a business district, modern apartment blocks and old villador. <laughs> it is full of immersive sounds that fill the streets and there are plenty of characters that you will meet along the way. But it's impossible to talk about all of this at once. So let's start with the places that you will visit and explore during your journey. And for that, I have my next guests, Katarzyna Zielinska, senior concept artist, and Bartosz Januszkiewicz, lead 3D artist. As we know, Villador is unlike any city we have seen before, mostly because the pandemic and the apocalypse have left their marks on the city. But what exactly are those marks? Yes, we wanted the player to feel the past of the city one while they're exploring it, uh, to see the city's old glory, uh, this old civilization, its old monuments of its old heroes, big skyscrapers, a TV tower, or uh, old abandoned uh, subway stations, or even an uh, abandoned cargo ship. I mean, the city's Hades are clearly behind us, but if you explore it fully, you find old traces uh, of the city just before the spread of the Haram virus. That's very true. Also, during exploration, the player will see that citizens of the city are trying to bring back some of the aspects of, uh, let's say, normality. And yes, they are fully aware that it's pointless, but they are still trying. To give you an example, we'll meet a man who, to add some love to the city, created something that's similar to today's dating apps. We'll also have a chance to listen to an opera singer who sings arias from years ago among the ruins. And those are the colorful characters I mentioned. Anything to add? Yes, it's definitely worth exploring the mage bass city of our game. Besides the player's main goals, side quests and missions, you can venture back to the past of the city once called Villador. You can find old traces of newspapers, recordings of the mayor's speeches, books, posters, and many, many other objects that will give you that feeling and history about that whole city. This also, the past can come back in the form of audio cassettes, uh, especially the ones recorded by a father who's desperately seeking to find out what is happening with his daughter. Oh, I know this story very well, and it is quite emotional, right? Yes, indeed. Okay, Bartek, thank you. Kasia, to you as well. Thank you for joining me. Of course, we have just scratched the surface of what's there in the game, but we will let you to discover it by yourself. Speaking of exploration, you can't jump into the city just yet, but you can start by exploring the very place where everything began, Haran from Dying Light 1. And much more, as the Platinum Edition of Dying Light is coming this year to Nintendo Switch on October the 19th. And yes, Switch? you can already pre-order it. You can find more details on our website, switch.dyinglightgame.com, so check it out after the episode. All right, back to Villador. We've glimpsed its past, we've seen its present, but what about the future of the city? Here to talk to us about that today is Tom Jabo, the world director of Dying Light 2. Hello, it's good to see you again. So, can we do more than simply explore the city? Yeah, much more. You see, when you first arrive in the city, you discover a decaying metropolis whose past glory you can really just imagine. And if you ask me, there's already beauty in that. But you know what's even more beautiful than a dying city? Seeing it come back to life? Exactly. In the first moments of the game, when Aiden makes it through the wall, the infrastructures are decaying, falling apart, or destroyed. But some are 
just dormant, waiting to be revived. So, for example, we have several electrical stations throughout the city, and of course, these have been offline for ages. But if you choose to do so, you can attempt to fix them. And if you succeed, it's a real game changer. With electricity back on, the face of the city changes. Storefronts light up, air vents turn on and help with the navigation, electrical traps become available to fight the infected, and old world remnants just come back to life. And you can explore these if you want to learn about the history of this place. Ooh, and I do want to learn about the history. So we, we can revive the city, literally, then? Yeah, but there are many more ways in which the choices of the player will shape the world around them. OK, I and mean, what kind of choices are we looking at? Well, actually, as you restore power to the city and help a new civilization rise on top of the old one, you're given one central choice. Which faction are you going to side with? It's called the City Alignment System. And besides gameplay consequences, it will give you the power to shape the skyline of the city, literally. You see, peacekeepers or survivors, according to your choice, will build different structures with a different function, arboring different characters inside of them. OK, um, so that's quite vague. Can we have a specific example in-game of what that might look like? Yeah, for sure. Let's look at this situation. So in this case, for example, <coughs> we chose to help the survivors. What we're going to see is they are going to build a school on the rooftop. And inside of it is a teacher teaching the kids. Now, let's look at what would happen if I chose the peacekeepers instead. You see, the school is turning into a PK rooftop outpost. And inside of it is now a shopkeeper with whom I can actually trade. And outside is an NPC who may just have a specific quest for me. Ooh, so we've gone from a teacher to a shopkeeper here. I mean, can we actually interact with these NPCs? Yeah, absolutely. Actually, let's look at it this way. If you were to go to a foreign place, you would probably want to talk to the locals to learn about where to go, where to sleep, where to eat, where to party, maybe. It's the same in our city. You can talk to the locals to learn about the insider secret of the city and actually answer some important world questions. You know, just learn to get around in our city. Oh, yeah, absolutely. But what about when the sun sets? Well, then it's a different thing, you know. You will learn about urban legend, folk tales, and actually ranging from campfire stories to songs to rooftop theater. People will always need stories to learn how to live, and it's especially important in our city. And who knows, if you pay attention, maybe you'll realize that some of your actions, some of the choices you make in-game, become stories told on the rooftops. I hope so there's an evil out. urban legend in yeah. the game. That's so cool. I mean, yeah. it sounds like I'm going to need multiple playthroughs to really fully experience the richness of these choices and these worlds. Well, thank you so much for joining us today, Thomas. It's been a pleasure. Thank you, Leah. If you'd like to start exploring the world of Dying Light 2 Stay Human already, why don't you go to techlandgg.com, where you'll find our whole new section with stories about the citizens of Villador. Check them out now and let us know on our social media what you want to hear about. And while you're there, don't forget to grab other rewards and goodies, such as these new weapons, the Dragon Breath Bow and the, the Neon fuck? Storm Yeon <laughs> Trusty. Go to techlandgg.com to get them now. That car, you see that car? My next guest is the composer of the Dying Light 2 Stay Human soundtrack, Olivier de Rivier. I want to talk about what the main inspiration for the soundtrack was then. The main inspiration came from the creative director who gave me one word, broken. So that was very inspiring because it's a strong word and we wanted to spread that idea through the city, the main characters, the story, everywhere. Not only through the story actually, but also through the gameplay. So every action, everything you're doing is supported by music. Okay, that's a pretty strong main theme. Um, does that change depending on who we're talking to or what we're doing? Yeah, definitely what we wanted to do is to have something that will imp be impactful for players, that will be recognized. So for instance, you have factions in this game those factions have a musical theme. And then as you are giving away some <coughs> zones, giving away some uh, buildings, location, you will give that to a certain faction. Therefore, you will have a certain music attached with the faction. And therefore, the music will sound depending on your choices, which is like creating the soundscape of the city out of your choices. Wow, yeah, so you're making it quite a personal experience then as you make your own little mini soundtrack. <laughs> Definitely, yeah. That's really cool, so it sounds quite interactive. It is very interactive. Let's take like um, that, I mean, throughout all the gameplay mechanics we have, there is parkour, of course. And the idea is like on the ground level, there is like death, there is nothing. And so we didn't <laughs> want to have music there. But on the rooftop where life is back, we wanted to have a sense of freedom. Mm. So parkour happens there. And you have the music at first, if you just run, 
what happens is like the music is just a soundscape, something that's you know it's not big. I wish to give but an the example. more moves you do, the more crazy stuff you're doing, jump over the you know the building, the walls, and everything. The bigger the music, to such an extent that at some point the music kicks in into a flow, parkour flow, and now you don't even want to stop parkouring because the music is pushing you to do that. So, yeah, yeah. That sounds really like rewarding. <laughs> it is very rewarding. Making your own little awesome soundtrack as you go. Um, well, what about the combat then? Is that the same? Yeah, the combat has the same treatment of being interactive. So you would have to meet, you know, any enemy with a special melody, a special theme. But mostly it's about your actions. So if you go and fight and decide to, very, to be very, very blunt, the music will react to this. As well as, you know, if you kill somebody, if you get away, like running away from the enemy, and <laughs> everything is supported by the music. Okay, all right. I mean, that sounds really intense. There's a lot going on. It sounds like the kind of thing we need to be able to see and hear together to truly appreciate. So. Why not take a look? Oh. Creepy ass music. But this game had super nice movement in the first game. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was so much fun just jumping around. It kind of feels like how Assassin's Creed should have been played. Wow, I mean, yeah, you can truly appreciate how it's all coming together and making, again, a really personal feeling experience. Um, but does that kind of change depending on where we are in the map, like what location we're in? Right, it definitely changes depending where you are in the game. So uh, it, when you start the game, the music would be sort of like soundscape moody, some little things, you know, we don't want to, to be too, too, too big. But as the player goes and as you understand more of the story, as you getting more empowered, the music grows and grows and grows to such an extent that at some point the music get a new treatment and an orchestra is now supporting your actions and the story. Yes, yeah, so now it's the next level for the music. But, you know, however, what we wanted to support as well is the personal story of Aiden. Mm. And for that, we wanted to have a very special sound, very special instrument that will make the sort of like emotional... Uh, okay, well, I mean, I really, really want to know more about this, but I am going to have to stop you there, unfortunately, because we need some secrets for next time, of course. Um, well, thank you so much for joining us, Olivier. It's been a pleasure and I can't wait to hear the soundtrack. Thank you. <clears throat> None of the things that we are talking about here today would be possible without the work of sound level designers, such as Edyta Moszynska Duralska, who makes it oh all God, work in the game. <laughs> Edyta Moszynska Duralska. Hello, Edyta. Hi. Uh, we are kind of uh, mediators, I think, between the composer, Olivier, and the game. We implemented his uh, music and vision into Dying Light 2, making sure that it all works as it's supposed to. Like, for example, uh, since we have so many teams, uh, the soundtrack must switch to another system whenever player wanders off the main plot. Whenever the, whether they fight walls, search for Mia, parkour, or enter Dark Zone, we see to Dark it zone? that the music gets all the changes and details in exactly those moments Olivier imagined. And we know that music changes when you parkour, fight, or enter locations, right? Yeah, sure. But how exactly does it work? So every system works uh, a little bit different. But in fact, it all comes down to creating special zones, scripting, and level design. And we had to set up all of this manually. Uh, for example, uh, the music needs to know if uh, the player is parkouring in a dangerous or safe place, if they are jumping over the street, uh, what kind of enemy they are fighting, what's the enemy's faction and rank, and so on, so on, so on. And the music uh, knows it's all mostly uh, thanks to special invisible zones that we add inside the game. Okay, invisible zones, this sounds intriguing. So what are they and how many of them are there in the game? Oh, there's so many of them, I, I guess millions, millions? probably. Uh, they are, let's say, <clears throat> boxes triggering when the player enters them. Whenever that happens, they tell the music that it needs to change. But, you know, that's the easy part. 
the hard one is to set up them properly and fit them into geometry of the world. So they send right message at the right moment. I think that the windmill was uh, really challenging in that matter. And why was it so? So as, as the player climbs the windmill, the music changes depending on the height okay, they are. But let me assure you that players will hear the amazing music and sounds that you have put into the game. Thank you, Edita. Thank you. They don't let them finish. <laughs> They never let the finish. If you thought the Dying Lights Who soundtrack couldn't get any more impressive, then we have something else to show you. It was played by none other than the London Contemporary Orchestra in the world-famous Abbey Road Studios. Check this out. Oh, is that so sick? Oh, dude, I love this. Generally, I try to get the the core, the substance of, uh, let's say, a word through an instrument. And this time uh, I had to go back to my friend Nicolas Bra, who's making instruments out of junks, literally junks. And he created this instrument that could be in the world of Dying Light to completely like accurate with all the little details and sort of, you know, the roughness of the instrument. Isn't this so sick? This, uh, this song? That instrument too. Now it's time for something special. We already know Aiden, the protagonist of Dying Light 2, Stay Human. And Hakon, who in our game has the face of David Bell, the inventor of parkour. David Bell! Now let's meet another important citizen. Yeah, and that's the perfect time to show you the surprise we have saved for last. Mm -hmm. You may know her from the Mandalorian series. Or from the famous Sin City. So without further ado, meet Lawan. It's Keanu Reeves again. It's Keanu Reeves again. It's not Kenny Reeves. Creepy. sorts a uh, very tough woman who is fighting her past why do i know her from and looking to seek revenge on the people who wronged her now what i really love about this game and this character is that how she is is really dependent on you the player is she going to be this rage-filled killer who is obsessed with her goals or will she be a night runner who risks her life to save others it's up to you. Senior writer Piotr Mostowski will tell us more about Lawan. Hello. <clears throat> so let's talk about Lawan. Lawan is uh, one of the strong, self-reliant women in the world of Dying Light to Stay Human. Uh, she is an important character with uh, a lot of impact on the plot, but we also wanted her to be way more than that. To be a real person with her own goals, her own motivations, and her own opinions as well. Uh, so if she doesn't like something you do or something you say, she will tell you that and, and she will act on it, um, you know, sometimes uh, even against you, and you will feel the consequences of it. She is her own boss and her kill list is open, so you don't want to end up on it. When she has a kill list. <laughs> Uh, no, <laughs> no, she doesn't. I need so. to know more about that. <laughs> so, guys, let's stop here because that's a spoiler. Peter, tell us more. Why did we choose Rosario to become Lawan? 
because Lawan is uncompromising and she's tough, and you are going to have a lot of crazy adventures with her, uh, sometimes balancing on the verge of life and death, you know, and in the process, uh, she can become your dearest friend or uh, your I enemy I can do at some this too. point. So in order to convey all that, because there Into is life. quite a lot to convey, we needed an extraordinary actor, and Rosario turned out to be just perfect, you know. And I cannot wait to meet her in game. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Dying Light 2 Stay Human is just a few months away, and on February the 4th, Jesus we'll finally Christ. be able to experience its vast and vibrant open world, complex characters, and gripping stories. Thank you for joining us today. Next time, we'll show you what choices you might encounter in the city and the ways in which you can change the world. Stay safe. Stay human. And? All right, I'm supposed to fill up the rest of the hour of Dying Light 1. So I guess that's that. Uh, let's see. Dying Light 2 is going to be co-op too, right? I I'm going to play with like Magmet and Kira and stuff. Yeah, we lost. We're never clearing that game. Is the game capture? Mm -hmm. Game capture. Hello. The eyes of the world have been glued to the city of Haran for the past. I don't remember how to play this game. Well, I cleared it, I think. Yeah. Oh. That was so short. Hmm. Well, it's gonna be longer. It's nice though. I don't like the interviews that have too much random developer talk. I, I like how they even cut off people because it was taking too long or something. <clears throat> that lady was like so excited to tell us about the world and the guy was just kind of like, eh, no, that's the end. Dude, I don't remember how to play this. If I die, I die. How do you switch weapons? I finished this, I think. Ammo. I have shotgun. Pickaxe, I think. There's New Game Plus. Ah, I don't want to do New Game Plus, man. I don't want to kill shit for like 40 minutes. Doesn't this game look so nice like this already? What the fuck? Thank you, C knows for the 100 bits. First don't know, first cut. And you got your salary? Shit, man. Congrats. Oh, it's night soon. What the fuck? What the fuck? How do you switch weapon? Tab? <laughs> I forgot how to play this shit! Oh, help! 12 bullets? No, 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 no toss!
Dun, 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 dun. I never finished the DLC for this game. That was like a whole new story section, right? I, I, that, that was like post uh, game. I, I never played all of that. I think it was pretty good too. Like better than the main game, they said. The DLC is the best. How do I start the DLC? I could do a bit of it, maybe. Quests, I guess? Almost like a billion quests. It's from the main menu? What the fuck? Let me, let me check. I don't remember how to play though. Is it like here? The following, I guess? Oh, I don't have it. <gasps> okay. All right, well, whatever, I guess. Was it, wasn't it free though? Like, you just have to download it, I think. But I don't have it. It's not free? Some other time, then maybe. What's fence trap? What did I do? What did I press? Alright. Alright. Clear safe house. What am I waiting for? I just have to fill up the hour and then it's done. <clears throat> I'm pretty tired, but it's fine, I guess. No biggie. I have done longer streams. Hey, you motherfucker! You're ugly! Holy shit. I forgot how creepy this game was. Where is it? Oh, there. I didn't do that many 16 hour streams. Especially lately. Like, I have a dog. That's why I walked my dog earlier today. What's flashlight? Q? I don't even clear this. Wrong building! It's this one. Is this a friend? Yes, Sukavlet! Give me your shit. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's like in The Walking Dead. Can't see shit, though. A night time is pretty scary in this game. I also wish I didn't use this feature. Torchlight! I can't see shit! F Q 
E? R? T? T! Oh, it's T! Okay. Oh my god. T for torch, of course. Fall damage? Give me that. Give me that. Where's the inventory? Is I? Oh shit, my whole inventory is full of items. <laughs> I completely forgot. But I played the shit out of this game. But it's been so long. Was there grappling? I don't remember grappling. Oh yeah, there was grappling. What's the hotkey? It's not middle mouse. This is middle mouse. It was something else. I have to select it. Fuck. Oh. Oh, there. Man, they're ugly. I also don't remember this game being this scary. What the fuck? Ugly bitch. Ammo though. What, what the fuck? Oh my god, my heart!
Asuka! They can't come up here, right? What the fuck? So, the greenhouse. <laughs> oh. I don't remember this game being this intense. I think I mostly avoided that time. Skill point acquired. Let's see. Skills. Agility. Oh, I almost have everything. No, of course. I never picked up slides? Is that just OP? How's that balance? Knight survived. Runner. I can already imagine how this game is gonna be in Dying Light 2. When I play with Magomed and uh, Kira. We're not beating the game. Oh yeah, harder, Danny, harder. Ah! Hands up. He's telling me to stay back, so what can I do, I guess? He's like, stay back! Oh, fuck! Hands up! Hands up! Hands up. <laughs> oh! It turns out they die if you leave them to get killed. He got caught by this, man. If you get caught by this, eventually you're dying anyway. There's no way saving him made any difference whatsoever. Look at this. It's pathetic. He died to this? $71. He already forgot I'm here. <laughs> How do I reach? He's behind the car. I can't reach. Hey. <laughs> Wait, what? What? Whoa, whoa! He got three. <laughs> what the fuck? I got caught by this! Back off! Fuck! 
Hands up! Can I go on this? Shit, no! You cannot jump on the power line. I survived the night to die like this. Typical. Very typical. What's this? Stuffed turtle. Yeah, fuck it, man. Let's go. <laughs> Jesus, the melee feels heavy in this. Oh my god! I, I like how the whole, there's the whole Mortal Kombat thingy. Oh my fuck. This is a melee. Oh. Okay, no. Does this work? I have a nade. Oh, yeah. Grenades are very big AOE. <gasps> no. Oh, oh, shit. So good. How do you jump down while dying here? Is that a haystack? Hold <laughs> 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 or to repair. Oh, oh, there's a spot. It's time. I have a better weapon than this. Look at this heavy that splitting axe, two hundred thirteen damage. Wait, what is this? Quarantine zone? Difficulty hard? Well, what, what are we doing here? Retrieve all disaster relief on site packages. Reward 5k. <laughs> what the f How do you kick again? Was it V? F? No? E? G? Wait, E, E, E! Oh, oh that wire almost killed me, man! Oh, this is so complete! Does it respawn me here? I hope it does. Or oh, it does. Okay, nice, nice. Infinite retries. Wait, what? Oh, it was here. Oh, thank fuck. Uh, I thought it like locked me out or something. Is this dying simulator too? I mean, you guys are very, very funny. Top tier. You're comedians. Look at my HP right now. Isn't that so nice? Oh, oh! One package? No, 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 
Shit, the goddamn switch broke down. Bats? A lot of men. Uh, how do I switch the minion weapon? <laughs> Fuck, what hotkey was it? F? Okay, I have a plan. Wait, no, the, the switch broke. One? Oh, it's one. Okay, 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 okay. Was this game always this hard? I can't focus! And the melee is satisfying in this. Kinda, kinda like chivalry. But with nicer sounds. Oh my eyes! Fucking bitch! You fucking bitch. Yeah. And fucking bitch. Where's my axe, bitch? This game was pretty nice at fighting, yeah. I, I like the fighting mechanics in this one. I dislike the uh, durability system, I think. What the fuck? That's not like one of those things that Lewis mobs here, is it? Man, this guy's jacked. Stay down, bitch. You even like a fucking Chad zombie. New world is tomorrow, dudes. I will play it all the day. All day long. I co op through this whole game with my girlfriend at the time. It was really fun. I, I, think, I think I carried? I don't remember. Maybe I fed. <laughs> what the fuck? My Anus! <laughs> Taekwondo, bitch! Look at this shit. Ah, that was kick. Boom! Long target! What the fuck? You shit! Do they learn or something when you spam the same attack? Boom! Match shot! <laughs> <laughs> bitch. It looks like you can't spam the same attack, they learn. Uh, 
Oh, I stop! Uh, cancel! Oh, you suck at two times! You fucking bitch! No, no, no! Please! Elf house kick! Boom! <laughs> No more, right? No way, three times. Wait, can I go there? <laughs> Fucking bitch. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Ugly bitch. <laughs> Into the taller one. She's kind of cute. Did she say no? Did you hear that? She's like, no. Where's the fuck? Oh, are you, f are you kidding me, dude? <laughs> Easy. <laughs> I didn't even move it. <laughs> Banga machete. <laughs> Easy peasy. Fuck the music is creepy in this game. I bet it's the same director as the one they showed earlier just now. With his like his self-made creepy instruments. This game was really nice. I have pretty fond memories of this. Quite intense, really, this whole game. It must, oh, oh, it was just here. Man, I was looking in the back. Yeah, I played it co-op. Like I said, I played this game, like the whole thing with my girlfriend at the time. It was pretty fun. I'm like, I didn't hear. Here? Seven billion DLCs? I don't remember it having DLCs. Well, I played on the release, I finished it, and then I was kind of done with it. Is ammo always this scarce? Maybe I should have missed. Nate's probably OP. No, damn it. Yeah, I think ammo is rare as fuck in this game. Like, you barely got anything. You just save ammo for, like, uh, really bad fights. Jesus, these are tough. 
Yeah, fucking bitch. What you gonna do, bitch? What you gonna do, bitch? You gonna fight, bitch? What you gonna do, bitch? Fucking bitch. Oh! What the fuck? Oh! Oh! No, no, no! Nine, 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 nine. Where is he? Where is he? I can't see shit. Oh, fuck, there's another one. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Slide! Oh my god! Hands up! Oh no! Oh you so good, man! Death loop, dudes. That game is finished. Oh, you can slide on them. Oh my god. How did I die the other time? I must have grabbed when I was going uh, up or something. But I want to bully somebody. I, I want to fight these zombies that can fight back. I want somebody to bully. Like, where it's like a pathetic zombie. Like you. Yeah, you're alone. No friends. No friends. 360, boom! Fuck a bitch. Oh yeah. Are you sick Slides or something instead of kicking. What is that? Oh, it's a jump kick. Oh, <laughs> I just broke my spine. <laughs> oh shit. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no no. Uh, 360 jump. <laughs> oh shit, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you can step on the like Mario. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> ah, shit. How, how is fucking melee combat ever good? You can just do this all day. Yes, yeah, so capable. It looks so nice. It's time. It's the end. My one hour is done. See you in heaven, my fellow zombie men. Oh, I'm done for the day, guys. That's all for today's stream. Deshi1, thank you for the 37 months. Indonesian TZN, thank you for the 16. Crispy Lettuce for the sub gift. Medzera, thank you for the 42. Kuala Beer for the tier 1. Absorb1, thank you for the $5. Xenos for the 200 bits. Absorb1, thank you for the 4 months up too. I'm done. Uh, tomorrow, more uh, New Worlds. Thank you for watching, guys. Good night. Bye-bye.